The class is Toy History 101. Your instructor, every figure of Casey Jones. It's morphin' time. Hello, this is Sanat here, and today we're following up my video where I talked about every Ninja Turtle set I owned with every Casey Jones I own. There's more than what you just see in this image here, but let's take a look at all the Casey Jones figures because this is absolutely my favorite Ninja Turtles character. So we're going to start small with the Mega Constructs Mirage Casey. This is based on the original appearance of Casey Jones from the Mirage comics. I like that they gave him the darker color for the shirt, so it kind of emulates the red that we've seen in a lot of art, but it also fits with the slate gray. Uh, this was part of a set, uh, like the other Mirage Turtles, where you had to buy him in playset form, but it was, I think, the only Mega Constructs Casey we got in this style. I don't think we got an 80s one, at least I don't have one, so you know, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. What's also cool about this one is that you do have a removable mask, so you got his face under there. It's a little bit washed out with the black wash stuff but uh, i think it's pretty cool that you have kind of a removable mask feature it's not very common with casey jones as we'll see to be able to remove the mask on him even though in some cases it would be very simple but yeah kind of a neat little start to our collection here so this casey is a blind box figure from uh, loyal subjects they did a series of mirage turtle stuff um, i picked up several of these but never the turtles could never get all four turtles there were blind boxes my local comic shop had these where they opened them and they marked who was who. So, of course, I grabbed Casey. I also got uh, a couple others uh, from this line. They're pretty neat. I think they're kind of a cool, like, super deformed style. They're a little bit articulated. Um, I think they're called action vinyls. I don't remember exactly what these were called. But this was Loyal Subjects' thing before they started doing their BST line that I think they're more known for now. But, uh, yeah, kind of a neat little Casey Jones. Uh, and I like the red shirt design from the Mirage. So here's a figure I've reviewed before, because I did talk about the Mirage Comics figures in my uh, my video. I think, I believe I called it uh, the Mirage NECA Ninja Turtles line. Go check that out if you haven't, because uh, I go into much more detail about this guy there, as well as the other Mirage figures in general. But yeah, I really love this Casey Jones uh, overall. I think, I think I said in the video as well, I think he's a little skinny, but in general, I do really like the way he looks. He's got that good comic style appearance to him. He is a little bit you know, flat in the chest. I think you could, you know, they kind of could have beefed him out a little bit more uh, just to kind of match that art style a little bit better. But I am looking forward to the red shirted version they have coming out in the future uh, because this figure is terrific and I don't mind owning a second one of these. Um, it's definitely cool when we get different uh, versions of Casey Jones, how there's some similarities. Like in this case, you know, the Mirage look was crop top, sleeveless shirt, sweatpants, and then fingerless gloves. You have no idea how much of that is like a default Casey design for the next few years. When the evil shredder attacks, these turtle boys don't cut them no slack. So here we have the Playmates Casey Jones. Uh, he is very Mirage Comics inspired. Uh, the cartoon design didn't stray too far from this, but this is very much kind of your Mirage look. Like I mentioned, sleeveless crop top, sweatpants, fingerless gloves. That's the, that's the Casey Jones look uh, that they were going for. And, I, I, you know, it's iconic, it's classic, it's really cool. Uh, this figure is a bit weird. Uh, being, you know, a vintage Playmates figure for Ninja Turtles, he does have kind of that pre-posed stance. But what I've noticed with him in particular is because of his bag, because his bag is so big and so heavy, it just kind of, like, drags him down. And this isn't a reissue. I do have a vintage, just an actual vintage this time. I know uh, when I did my Turtles last time, I was like, oh, I only have reissues from 98. This is... This is actual vintage Casey Jones. I love the uh, very violent imagery of uh, the shattered bats as opposed to just like normal bats, the, the least splinters in you. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really cool. He does have kind of like weird articulation just because that's the style of the figures. Uh, this is actually the second one I got. The first one I had uh, picked up was this one, which didn't have any accessories. Um, but you can kind of look at some of the sculpted detail they put into these figures. was kind of amazing. Like, he's got the torn sweatpant knees, but they're, like, kind of stitched over like he tried to fix them, which I think is pretty great. Uh, the, the green shoes. The coloring is so strange, too, because uh, it doesn't match the cartoon nor the original comic. But you, they added the shoulder pad to the toy design, which carried forward to the show, uh, which is kind of neat because that wasn't on the uh, original um, design for the vintage figure or the... 
That wasn't on the original design for the Mirage comic. Uh, the interesting part about this figure, too, is the way they sculpted hair on him. Um, so, of course, they sculpted, you know, hair. What I'm saying is, like, he's got body hair sculpted in, uh, like, peering between the shirt, um, down on, on his abs here, and, like, around the edge. They were like, no, Casey Jones is going to be a very hairy guy. Like, he even has sculpted armpit hair, which is just so strange because you don't see that like, ever on action figures. Uh, he also has, of course, sculpted arm hair. I guess they were kind of going for a Wolverine thing. Uh, it's a cool figure. I like the look of him. It's not my favorite Casey figure because he is so awkward looking. You know, it would be really nice if we could get one that was larger that maybe didn't have this weird stance and could stand a little bit better and maybe have some more modern articulation. You think we could do that? Hey, look, it's exactly what I wished for. Uh, so this is probably one of my favorite Casey Jones figures. This is the Super 7 Ultimates. Uh, much like a lot of the, especially early Ultimates, it's directly based on the vintage figure. Uh, I like the colors a little bit better, because uh, you see they kind of mint with this sort of greenish color as opposed to the more bluish. In general, I just, I love, you know, it's the visual of the, hey, let's take the toy and then make it, you know, larger scale. It's like, this is a kid's toy, this is an adult figure, so you have, you know, your scaling is proportionate. But also just taking a lot of the sculpted details here and giving them some more depth and details. So let's take a look at that. This was the figure that got me into the Super 7 Ultimates line. I wasn't sure. I was debating it. I was like, man, those turtles look cool. And then they're like Casey Jones and Mondo Gecko in the same wave. And I was like, well, I'm in. Uh, I love the shading they gave on the mask because it's very reminiscent of that vintage head sculpt where they gave it some shading. But it's a little bit more toned down, a little bit cooler. I do wish he had alternate heads uh, because that's something that the Turtles came with where you could have like some different looks to them. But we are getting a Casey Jones with alternate heads later, uh, including a broken mask version and the red shirt to more match the Mirage design. Totally down for that. That's going to be super cool. If we're talking about the detail, I, I pointed it out. He doesn't have the hairy detail. Like, like the vintage definitely 100% has it. Uh, he doesn't have it as much here. It's still kind of there. It's a little bit lighter on the sculpt. Uh, it's not so hardcore. Uh, it is still kind of there. Um, he doesn't have like anything in the armpits or anything because he's got actual working shoulders there. He does have the sculpting on the arms for it. He does have this really strange waist where it doesn't quite like line up to the front. Uh, and I think it's supposed to kind of like match how this, you know, was kind of, he kind of has a thin waist there. Um, it's a little bit strange. Uh, I won't lie. That's a little bit strange. The uh, paint wash is really nice on like the bandaged hand. And then, of course, all the weapons are painted now as opposed to being green. I think it also does come with green plastic ones as an option. He comes with hockey pucks, which is, like, I think the only time a KC figure has come with hockey pucks. So that's super cool. Uh, you know, they kind of, you know, have the same details with the bandaged over knees. Like, the bandaged over knees are detailed. And then down to the shoes where they painted the laces. And I didn't even realize, like, it's the same on the vintage figure. But he has, like, one partially untied shoe and then one nicely tied up shoe which is really cool and then like the texture on the bottom of the feet where they the vintage one had nothing this one they added all that uh the the soles of the feet which i think is really cool it kind of is plussing up the design same for the um the bag of his sports equipment his sports bag you can kind of see they redesigned a little bit better too to kind of fit his back you get of course the battered uh bats with the damage part you get a, like a clean bat uh, there's another broken bat and then like, uh, you know, club that's got, you know, rubber bands on it to hold it together. I really like this figure. It just takes everything that I love about the vintage figure, but brings it into a fully articulated larger size and giving it more of that detail and, and shading. And I really look forward to that red shirt version coming later because I think that'll be super cool. I didn't even notice he, this is actually a sleeveless sweatshirt because he's got a hood back there i just noticed it on this because it's a little bit more prominent but it's on there on the vintage and that's what i love uh, i love that aspect of the super 7 ultimates is that they kind of take and plus up the vintage designs and sort of show you details you never would have noticed before and then on top of that they start uh putting in some new design stuff too which i i really really like so yeah this is uh this is definitely one of my favorite figures and it's kind of like a nice upgraded version of this uh just in a larger form all right, so this next figure I haven't actually opened yet, and we're just going to open it here. Why not? Uh, this is a Casey Jones from the Loyal Subjects BST AXN line, which is BST Features, BST Articulation, BST Assortment. I think it's supposed to be like best something. This line's a little weird. They've been picking up a ton of licenses. Um, this one I think was exclusive to Walmart. This is their first Casey Jones. 
Uh, they did a second one based on the Image Comics Casey, and I just did, I don't like that version of Casey, so I just didn't pick it up. I w wasn't really collecting this line because they're five inches. They were mostly doing the original vintage cartoon. I, I already got my NECA cartoon stuff, so I was good. And then they announced they were doing IDW Ninja Turtles stuff, and I was like, oh, well, okay, uh, you got my attention. But of course, I did pick up Casey Jones. I just didn't have a reason to open him, so like, thought, hey, why not for this video? So I haven't held one in hand before, um, like experienced one out of the package. I've just seen them in stores. Um, there he is. So, yeah, like, you know, what better time than the present to open up a uh, Casey Jones? So... Here he is. He's kind of interesting because he definitely is cartoon inspired, but boy, is this really just like an upgrade to, or not an upgrade, but an update to the uh, vintage design, the vintage toy design. It's not 100% the vintage design. It's definitely more inspired by the vintage than it is the, the cartoons. Um, what is up with this knee back here? What is this? I am fascinated and a little horrified. That is how they cut, they cut kind of that's an ugly knee. Interesting. Let's go through the articulation. He's got, like, basically no movement in the neck. Or shoulder moves out. Shoulder 360s. Uh, you've got bicep swivel, double joint elbow. It's not a clean double joint elbow. It's kind of those really annoying, like, really flat ones. Um, you got wrists that rotate, pivot. This kind of upper ball joint. Hips that, wow, that just kind of springs back at you. Um, that doesn't really go that far. A little bit forward, not much. Thigh swivel. We just popped it off the, sh the joint there. Uh, double joint knee, just like with the elbow, it's just really flat. Uh, ankle pivots left, right, up and down. It works. Uh, I think their new IDW turtle stuff looks a little bit better sculpt-wise. Uh, accessories, let's see, we got, of course we got his bag. That is, why is that such a solid, dense piece of plastic? I can't even get it over his head. Should we pop the head? All right, oh, okay, that's why it doesn't move. It's just a solid ball with nothing else going on, okay. You know, this is Casey Jones, he's gotta have his stuff. He's gotta have his gear. Uh, oh, that's kinda cute. I just noticed it says Eastman on the stick and it says Laird on the uh, shoulder pad, Eastman and Laird being Kevin Eastman, Peter Laird, the uh, co-creators of Ninja Turtles. Um, here's his other hockey stick. Stick that in the bag and he's got, yeah, this is definitely toy inspired. He's got the uh, broken bat. It shows you how little attention I paid to this figure. I was like, oh, he's a cartoon inspired, like just like the others. No, he isn't. Uh, you also get a sticker of the logo for whatever reason. Uh, there's a couple hands here, look like fists, but there's the unmasked head. If I can get it on, does it want to just pop right on? It'd be hard to break it because it's just a solid joint. Okay. Ah, uh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Um, so first of all, ignoring the head sculpt, uh, just for a moment, painted neck, plastic face. This matches this, but this doesn't match this. Uh, it looked better with this because you couldn't see any flesh. Also that face, that face reminds me not so much of like the the vintage or the mirage, but like more so of the 2003. That's that's more 2003 Casey. I'm starting to just spoil Casey Jones in this. That's interesting. Uh, you know, I kind of this is definitely this doesn't look like the same dude. Like his hair is all kind of spiky and messed up. It's all nice and straight. He's okay. You know, he's just okay. Kind of glad I got to open him here with you guys on this video. All right, so getting to a cartoon specific Casey Jones is funny because he was only in five episodes. Uh, character was deemed too violent, so they left him out of the TV show initially, and they only had him in a few episodes. Uh, he was cool. He never took his mask off. Kind of neat stuff, but in general, you know, I don't think he left that memorable of an impression, uh, which, you know, for me, who uh, started watching the 87 show before anything else, uh, Ninja Turtles-wise, you know, I didn't really know Casey Jones for, for a bit. There was a, there was a bit where I didn't know who Casey Jones was, um, but this is a nice figure. It's got the kind of, you know, standard NECA shading effects that we see. You can kind of see how they took this design, and we'll bring the Super 7 in just to make it easier, kind of how they took that toy design and brought it to the show, where you got the shoulder pad, you got the bag and all that, and that's, you know, it's all inspired by, of course, the, uh, the Mirage design, which, you know, again, crop top, sleeveless, you know, this has shoulder pad, they all have sweatpants, you know, it's kind of that, that's kind of the thing they were going for uh, with his design. And, you know, it's 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 become the iconic design because of that. But I think in general, it's nice to have a cartoon Casey, even if he was limited in appearance, just because he is an iconic Ninja Turtles character, less so than an iconic character from that show. And this is a pretty nice figure. I think, um, you know, they've gone back and redone April. Uh, this Casey came in a two-pack with a damaged foot soldier. You know, it'd be nice to release him again for the people that don't have that, because I it's been a while since they released him and I think they should re-release him. Uh, that would be 
pretty nice for everybody. I personally, you know, unless they upgrade him in some way, but I don't know how, because he's pretty good. Like, I don't have any complaints with him. Uh, he does come with, like, some different type of accessories. He's got a hammer, um, and he's got, like, this steel pole uh, instead of a second bat. You know, that's cartoon-specific. But, yeah, I, you know, it would be nice to get him out again. I think it's been a little too long since they've had Casey in this line. I look at it, and I'm like, man, you weren't in the show that much. How did I become such a fan of this character? Hey, look, it's the reason I'm a fan of this character. The 1990 movie Casey Jones is the pinnacle of Casey Jones in a lot of ways. Um, he was the introduction for me to the character. Uh, he is the most quotable version of Casey Jones, and he was portrayed so perfectly. Uh, it's... It's a great adaptation of the character. I really, I have no notes on this. The cool part too is uh, NECA did release a Casey Jones. They couldn't get the likeness rights to the actor originally, um, but after Judith Hogue worked with NECA on her April O'Neil figure, boom, we got the likeness rights and got an Elias Codius face uh, for Casey Jones. I just had to rebuy him, uh, which is not a problem for me. I have a mast and a mast. Um, terrific figure. I did review this version of Casey in the two pack with Raph way back when it came out. Um, that video did really, really poor. Um, but I just, I love this adaptation of the character. The ultimate version not only included the uh, unmasked head, it also included the separate mask. They also redid the elbows. So instead of having these weird double jointed elbows that only get that far, uh, they just gave them single joints that look a lot cleaner. Uh, I really appreciated that that upgrade there for sure. This version of Casey does take a lot of inspiration from the Raj comic personality, but also design. Well, he doesn't have the crop top, or the sleevelessness, he still has like this vest over shirt thing. It's very kind of slapped together. He's got the sweatpants, the shoes, that kind of thing. They're very similar, and that's that's important. The other thing I really like too is that unlike some other versions of uh, Casey in live action, aka when he showed up in Ninja Turtles 3 or one we'll talk about later, he has a very distinctive mask design. Uh, he could have just used any hockey goalie mask uh, there, but they, they created a new design that's very reminiscent of the comic look, which I really appreciate. And I just this version of the character was what made me a Casey Jones fan. It certainly wasn't the 80s cartoon. It was this movie. And I think it's we'll always will love this movie, not just because it's a great movie, but also because it introduced me to my favorite Ninja Turtles character of all time. Alright, so here is a more modern take on Casey. This is from the 2003 series, which took a lot of inspiration from the Mirage comics. His debut episode is almost like a one-for-one one of his debut in Mirage. Um, this figure is, you know, it's 2003 uh, Turtles figure, so he has like an action gimmick, which is this, uh, you know, it's the He-Man waist gimmick. Or you just like spring it back, and he swings. He has more accessories than this. I don't know where his bag is. I don't know where his mask is. I don't know where his other weapons are. It's the only one I got. Um, I've had this figure since I was eight. Uh, but yeah, this was kind of what put me on board with the 2003 series as a kid. Because I thought the series did seem kind of... It was weird for me. Like, I I liked it. I was kind of into it, but I wasn't super into it. I still think I preferred 80s Turtles uh, cartoon-wise for whatever reason. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's a show that I think over time, too, it, it sort of lost its luster by the time you get to, like, fast forward. Um, so I think that was part of the problem. But... In general, it was nice that Casey had like a main role, considering he didn't have one in the 80s cartoon. He didn't have one in Next Mutation. This was the first time he had like a main role. So it kind of followed up from the movie stuff as well. Because uh, I think the movie made him kind of a mainstay character, where uh, the previous adaptations just kind of left him to the side. Uh, even though it was really important in the Mirage comic. But speaking of the Mirage comic, you know, the show is based on Mirage, but they did give him kind of an updated design. This is very 80s, right? The uh, the track pants, the you know kind of fancier shoes, the hockey gloves as opposed to the fingerless gloves, the tank top shirt as opposed to the crop top. They definitely modernized him. Uh, also, the 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 slicked hair I think works too. Uh, they kind of did modernize him, which I think is really really cool. And it's an overall good design. Um, there I don't know if they released many other cases in this line. I don't I didn't follow the 2003 toy line as close as a kid or as an adult. I haven't really looked into it. Um, but this is, you know, the kind of the default Casey that goes into the collection. Uh, with Super 7 doing 2003 Ninja Turtles stuff, though, I imagine we'll get a Casey Jones, but we'll have to see if we have to wait to Wave 4 like we did for the Vintage line. Because um, I would definitely love to see an update of this that doesn't have the tendency to fall over at a moment's notice. Alright, so here's the Casey Jones from the 2007 movie, which is technically the Casey Jones from the 1990 movie, since that movie, this anime movie, is kind of a sequel to that original trilogy. 
Uh, the interesting part with this design is that this is kind of based on his end of movie final battle design where he's kind of more armored up because they're going to go fight the monsters and the demons. But he still has the, the, the regular goalie mask, not the metal one that April gives him. That being said, it does remove, uh, so you can get a nice face sculpt there, which I think looks pretty good. It's pretty on point to the film's design, honestly. He does look pretty good there. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of interesting because I think he should have had the metallic mask. Maybe that's something they you know, didn't know about when they made the figure. Probably, probably one of those things, like movie was in production kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, he did get a metal mask in that movie, so this look matches that. He had the uh, the original kind of mask when he was just running around in a red t-shirt, all uh, mirage looking. Um, but yeah, so you got kind of the figure here. What's interesting is they give you two options for holding his accessories. So you get the standard bag, which again kind of goes with the earlier look from the film. And of course you get the two, you get two baseball bats, a golf club, and a, uh, a wiffle ball, not a wiffle ball, cricket bat. Um, kind of going with the, uh, the the 1990 movie having that. But you can also put the two baseball bats in this harness type thing, um, which I can't remember exactly how this goes. Yeah, there we go. You can put them in this kind of like cross harness for the baseball bats, and then you can put this on him instead. And this, again, kind of goes with the later movie design, but also just kind of gives him a unique design in general. Uh, instead of carrying the whole golf bag, He's more like ready to go into battle and he's just, he knows what he needs, uh, which I think is really cool. Um, but yeah, you can probably put this on him instead. So it's kind of neat to see a Casey Jones with options because um, he kind of ends up with the same accessory loadout all the time. Um, but there's the golf club, there is the cricket bat, and boom, there you go. So you can have him do that, which I think is kind of a cool, unique look for him uh, instead of just having the standard like uh, golf bag. That being said, his articulation is super, super limited. Uh, the turtles are fairly articulated. He doesn't even have outward shoulders. He just got wrists, no elbows, hips that move forward, knees that, what was even the point? Um, no rotations in anything, and the head barely moves. That was kind of a problem with these figures. They were very static. The turtles were really nicely articulated. Everybody else was pretty much a statue. But he does look good overall, and I do think he turned out you know, he's a good representation of that movie, but if someone wanted to go back and like redo and do new figures from that movie, I would totally be down. Because I think the designs are great, but the figures just haven't aged well. All right, so I just put these all into one segment here for the 2012 show Casey Joneses. There was some others, there's some repaints, there was another one that they included in a vehicle set. I didn't get any of those. Uh, I was kind of happy with these two. 2012 Casey's different, uh, where, you know, we've kind of had the same sort of approach with Casey Jones uh, in the past, which is, you know, he was a hockey player, he got injured, he couldn't be a hockey player anymore, so he decided to become a street vigilante because he really loved movies, and he liked watching movies with vigilantes, and that's what inspired him to go out, and he may or may not have, uh, like, a concussion that caused some brain damage. You know, that depends on the origin story there, but that's kind of Mirage 2003, uh, you know, 1990 movie. This is a, this is different. This is a Casey Jones who's a teenager, kind of like how they made April a teenager in the 2012 show. Casey is also a teenager. Um, he just wanted to fight monsters. He's a very simple man. Um, the cool part here was that they kind of kept some of the core elements of the design where you got like the shoulder pad harness thing. You've got, of course, the goalie. They kind of amped up the goalie stuff because he's got a goalie guard that he stuck spikes into. He's got the goalie gloves. They gave him roller skates, which I thought was neat. Kind of gave him some dynamicism uh, to kind of keep up with uh, the turtles and stuff, was having these skates pop out, which was pretty cool. Of course, he still uses the sports equipment, but it's more it's more hockey-based. He's definitely more hockey-based overall. And then one of the most unique features, they had this painted goalie mask, which is kind of a standard goalie mask that he painted with uh, the kind of skull look, which I think is really cool. But then he also painted his face underneath, <laughs> which was... Kind of funny is that he had like the skull face paint underneath, and then he'd also put a mask on on top of that. Um, so it was like a little, a little bit, a little bit extra uh, in that regard. Um, but yeah, there he is, looking all kind of crazy. Um, I like this figure overall. I think it's you know it's a good standard figure. He's not got weird uh, posing stuff. He has kind of this, um, he has kind of like this this cheap Halloween costume vibe to him as well, which I think is is pretty neat, uh, especially with like the hood and everything. He's really cool. I, you know, I, I thought it was a good interpretation of the character, and it fit the setting of the show. Um, but yeah, he was pretty great. And then uh, when everybody went to space, you got space armor. 
Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I remember the show correctly and he went to space and got space armor. I believe this is a thing or is this just a toy thing? Wow. Memory is not serving me well at the moment. Uh, you can pop the helmet off here. This has, uh, much like the April in the space armor, even though you can't see as well on him, has a more cartoon accurate look under the head. He doesn't have the face paint. He's wearing his uh, headband kind of thing. So that's pretty cool. He looks really neat. Uh, I like how he adds to the uh, space armor display. And then the last one I got is the Half Shell Heroes, Casey Jones, uh, which is kind of him without the hood or the mask. So you got his bandana or his headband look and then the face paint. Pretty cool. It's a, it's a neat little figure for the preschool line. I think this was a cool interpretation of Casey Jones. I like the all black color scheme. I kind of like the, you know, sort of kid in, kid on Halloween, but also like fighting, fighting mutants and stuff. That's the kind of stuff I think just kind of like it fits the Casey Jones character of he's just a guy who wanted to fight mutants and be a vigilante and be a hero to people. And that's that's all Casey Jones is. And I think that this brought that spirit and core to it uh, in a really cool way. So there's got to be one I don't like, right? Uh, yeah, I don't like it out of the shadows, Casey Jones. I don't really like this figure either. He has the roller skate thing uh, that, you know, they were doing with the 2012 Casey. And you can pull these off, but he's, he's incredibly long-legged. Uh, so he just looks really, really tall when he's up on them. Other than that, he's uh, boring as crap. Uh, so the thing is that the problem I have, uh, this is not a great figure at, at all. Uh, I'm just going to let you look at it while I talk about the character. I didn't like him in Out of the Shadows. I was excited. I was like, oh, hey, you know, it's Casey Jones. He's going to be in a movie again. Great stuff. So... I don't know what the storyline plan was here because it didn't come across great. Um, instead of being a hockey player who, uh, you know, got washed out of hockey and decided the next thing he was going to do was, you know, vigilante work, probably again because a little bit, little bit of brain damage. I think that's uh, consistent with a lot of Casey Jones adaptations. This one was a cop with rage issues, and cop with rage issues gets kicked off the force for rage issues. So there you go. You already know the movie's really unrealistic to begin with. And then that's pretty much all his character is. Um, he's just like, be, goes from cop to vigilante, but like, it just doesn't work the same, you know? Like, it, it works better when like, you have Mirage Casey in his apartment watching like, cop movies where the cop goes rogue and goes and takes care of business and then he just gets inspired to do stuff like that. It's a different thing to make him a cop and then just have him like, leave the force because he's got a rage problem and then he just randomly pulls out a hockey stick from his trunk. It's Out of the Shadows is a movie I enjoy. I legitimately do. Uh, Casey Jones is not one of those things I enjoy about it at all. I, I got nothing else. I could just sit here and complain or we could just move on. So what happens when you take the Phantom of the Opera and Casey Jones and put them together. You get Casey Jones as the Phantom of the Opera. This is a really cool figure uh, because I think it just makes so much sense to do Casey with the Phantom simply because of the mask. Uh, he does come with alternate heads. Uh, this one is specifically the broken half mask, goalie mask look that has uh, the exposed face, which I think is just very Phantom. That's why I kept it. He has a ton of accessories. This is a reuse from his movie figure. In fact, yeah. Just like with the other uh, Turtle Universal Monster crossovers, the mask design is definitely giving me movie vibes. So I think it is supposed to be movie Casey, Merge of the Phantom. He's got this cool goalie mitt with like a skull and crossbones look to it. They worked in kind of the hockey design elements in with the suit elements. He's got this really crazy torso joint that's covered in a, a rubber overlay. He has all kinds of cool stuff going on and honestly, I think just covering him here would be a bit of a disservice because of how amazing he is. So uh, stay tuned. I might I might be doing a video. Um, you know, this is September when I'm filming this. October is coming. Halloween is coming. I might have to follow up and do something uh, with this figure. So stay tuned. Sorry, time to complain again. Um, that's where it ends. Uh, that's, that's, that's not the end of the video. I have, I have something else to say here, but, um, that's as far in the timeline as we get. You're probably like, oh, is Casey Jones just not showing up in anything? Well, he's shown up in IDW. I love the IDW version of Casey Jones. Very similar to the core tenants of the character. Um, in this case, he is a little bit younger, but he escapes his abusive father and goes to live with the turtles. And it's, um, again, follows that, that similar line of 
He's just a normal guy who wants to do better for people than he had for his own life. And uh, I really like it. I really like that that interpretation of the character. I kind of sort of did a Halloween costume where I kind of mixed that design that he had in that comic. I uh, used the, the 1990 movie mask like I did in this video uh, and just kind of made my own Casey Jones costume out of it. It was pretty cool. I like the, the, the IDW Casey a lot. So it's a bummer we don't have any figures of it, but with Loyal Subjects doing figures of IDW, I would like to see that. Now, the other thing is that uh, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, its toy line ended early, so it didn't even make like all its main villains, let alone, I don't know, should I put a spoiler alert? Spoiler alert here. Uh, go to this timestamp if you haven't watched Rise of the TMNT. I don't want to spoil this for you, but if you're wondering if Casey Jones is in that show, I'm just going to say yes, but I'm not going to tell you how. If you don't want to, skip this timestamp. All right, so Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had a character who was part of the foot, and she was there, and she was kind of like following things to like resurrect Shredder, and eventually she helps resurrect Shredder, and then realizes that the Shredder is pure evil and has to get... She's like, oh no, I actually have to defeat this guy. I was totally wrong here. And to make up for that mistake, she helps the turtles fight Shredder. Uh, we didn't know her name for the whole show, and at the uh, in the last episode of season two, which was the last episode of the show... Um, she revealed her name was Cassandra Jones, and her friends call her Casey. Love that character. Love that reveal. It also takes that similar core aspect of Casey Jones of, like, normal person who's going to fight the crazy things, even though they shouldn't. Um, and it, in that moment where she she reveals herself, it's just beautiful. I love that scene. Uh, and then for the Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, they had another Casey Jones who was from the future as a time traveler. And um, he came back to the past to try to stop this calamity that was going to happen. And he had kind of the more traditional Casey Jones look. In fact, he had kind of the color scheme of the, the vintage toy in a way, which was really neat. Um, and he was trying to like, you know, again, normal guy trying to help out, help the turtles, uh, make things happen, save people, that kind of thing. Really liked him as well. Uh, and I love the fact, uh, the connection between him and Cassandra. And I don't even want to spoil that. I just want to leave that as a little bit of a mystery in case you've never uh, seen the movie. But... Um, I, I like both of those versions, and the fact there's no toys of them sucks, uh, especially because the Rise of the Teenage Mutant Turtles toy line was in and out so quick. Maybe if it had lasted a little bit longer, we could have gotten like a Casey um, from the movie. So I'm kind of like bummed out because those are two versions of the character I really like that take different elements and work together. And it's also like Rise spoiled me a bit by giving me two Casey Jones, but we don't have any toys of them at all. So like I hope somebody is like, hey, let's do Rise of the TMNT figures especially since the show's had a bit of resurgence of popularity recently. And such concludes the segment where I'm talking about Casey Jones that don't exist. So I hope you enjoyed that look at my Casey Jones collection. I definitely had fun doing this one. If you want to see more videos like this, I can certainly do them for other Ninja Turtles characters. I have a lot of April Splinters and Shredders specifically, and I might be able to work in some other ones here and there. So let me know in the comments. The last video was really well received when I talked about all the turtles, so I'm happy to do more of these. I really do enjoy making videos like this. Kind of fun just to talk about a collection of things in a casual format like this. So let me know if you enjoyed it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe and notification bell if you haven't already. Be sure to check out my live streams Mondays at 5 p.m. Eastern here on this YouTube channel. And you can join the Discord server in the link below to come chat with the community around everything that we love that we cover on this channel. Also be sure to check out my social media if you'd like at SoundOut12. You can find my awesome graphic designer on social media and in the Discord at DarkClaws643. And you can find Hero Club at HeroClub.com for comic news and movie news and more. So until next time, this is SoundOut saying goodbye.